Chris Lesso here. Keep rocking your path, whatever that path is. For me, it's drumming, but for you, it could be anything. This is life through rhythm. How you are in your life is how you're gonna take it into your craft and what you're building and what you learn there you can take into your everyday life. So for me, it's everything like focus, confidence, self-expression, patience, humility, uh, perseverance, energy. There's just so much that goes into this and, and we kind of distill it down into what's called LTR, life through rhythm. So we're gonna take this concept today and apply it to something called RLG. And this is what I learned to think about before I would perform or before I'm gonna, you know, the red lights on in a studio and I'm recording or basically in a, in a stressful situation, maybe an audition, something you're doing in school. It could be anything. So RLG, so this is an acronym. Acronyms are really powerful. I like to use them a lot. Uh, it's like distilling a meaning down into something that you, you hit your brain with really quick. So it's, it's like distills it down uh, and then the meaning just gets really quickly. So it can change your state very, very quickly. Just repeating this to yourself, almost like a mantra as well. So this came out of me learning the hard way. Uh, and this was something that I, you know, selfishly did for myself first and that I, I want to share with you and I share this with a lot of my students where you you learn not to think of the things that don't work and this can be almost like a mental game and that's why part of life through rhythm is so much about the mental game of drumming or the mental game of whatever you're doing it's almost like 99 percent you know work in your mind and then one percent application into the world it's like once you've won the battle first in your mind You've already, you've already won before you actually go out there and do it. So if you've ever heard that, uh, sometimes it's a little thought experiment. I've read this in Modern Drummer, I think, and I've heard different drummers talk about it where it's like, what if you're playing a show, you're at a performance, you're on stage, and your five like heroes, you see them out of the corner of your, your eye, walk in and sit down at a table. So this could be for like comedy, drumming, anything else, you know, sports, where like, just imagine your heroes walking and sitting down at a table and they've, they've come to check you out. So like the legends in your field, you know, Michael Jordan sits down and, <laughs> and they're just watching you do your thing. So how does that make you feel? Like, does it change, you know, it's a good thing to ask yourself. Does it change what you do? And if so, how does it change what you do? I don't, and do you, you know, do you not care? Do, are you pretending not to care? Like, I think if anybody says they, oh, I don't care, I wouldn't even notice. It's like, nah, I don't, I don't think so. If I saw my heroes walk in and sit down and, and, and check me out, and, and that has actually happened to me. I tell the story at the Sonar Drum Festival a couple years ago, and one of my great heroes is Steve Smith. He's, he's one of the best. And, and he was, he was uh, my band Modus Factor was at this drum fest and I knew he was on as well. So he did some workshops and he was, he was performing as well. So I'm like, I, I kind of knew, I'm like, I'll, I'll bet you he's gonna, you know, Steve likes to learn and check out things. And, and I'm like, he could be watching my band play. <laughs> and I remember kind of didn't see him and we start playing and I didn't think about it. And then I looked over and like, you know, eight feet away or something at the side of the stage, like Steve's sitting there eating a sandwich, kind of side stage where the audience can't see him, checking my band. I'm like, whoa, okay, okay. <laughs> it kind of jarred me out of the moment. So that's actually happened to me and it could happen to you too, where like sometimes it's a teacher just staring at you or, you know, sometimes it can be like your family, uh, but, but someone watching that you really respect. So anyway, what goes through your head and, and what kind of happens? And sometimes you can get in like a downward spiral of like judgments and you know, you might play a fill that doesn't work and you're like, oh, why did I play that fill? I've never, never done that before. And you're like, oh, I, I can't believe I did that. And then because you're thinking about that, you miss like the next part and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm so distracted. I have missed two parts now. And then it can be this like 
downward spiral. So, so I've kind of learned, you know, through experience, and as we say, experience is just making mistakes and taking the wisdom from that and, and not quitting and just going forward. Uh, but RLG is really kind of distilled down from these things. So what you probably don't want to think is like, as you walk towards the stage, imagine slow motion, you're like walking towards the stage, maybe your heroes are watching you. And what you don't want to think is like, I gotta look really good. I better play really fast and impress people. Uh, you know, putting that pressure on yourself. I better look good. So notice like I, 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 it's always about, it's always about you. So what you definitely want to do is focus on other people. What I, I remember hearing Wayne Dyer once and he said, right before he speaks, he said, I, I really hope I'm a blessing to these people that are watching me. So it like takes the focus off you and puts it on the other people. So let's get into it. So RLG, the first one, first letter of the acronym stands for be real, be real. RLG, the first one, R, be real. And this is really like about you, like be yourself. You can't be somebody else. If you go up there and you're trying to be, you know, John Bonham or you're trying to hide behind the persona of somebody else, like you can only do that up to a certain point. Some people can fake it pretty good, but you'll never get 100% there because obviously you're not that person. Be yourself for everybody else is taken. And if you look at your fingerprints, your fingerprints are completely unique. There is no two fingerprints alike in all the universe. And that's also true for snowflakes and probably grains of sand, you know, the, the uniqueness of each thing. So when you just go up there and you just play doom, ta, doom, doom something super simple like you're gonna sound like yourself whether you realize it or not so we can also say don't compete create don't compete create so don't compete and try to sound like somebody else just create your own vibe just like what do you have to say in that moment so that's the R in RLG be real now the L in RLG is listen and this really ties into what we just said, focus on what's around you. It's really easy to be, you know, in, in your, like in my case, the drum bubble where you're like, okay, I'm gonna do this and then this part's coming up and then, and being hyper aware of like you. You know, you can imagine having dinner with somebody or just hanging out with somebody and going, oh, do I look right? Uh, is my zipper done up? Uh, how's my shirt looking? Oh. And just you're so wrapped up in yourself that you kind of forget to, oh, sorry, what'd you say? And you, you kind of forget to like listen to what's going on around you. And we probably all had that experience. Sometimes even if, you know, I can remember a couple times riding my bike somewhere and I get so lost in my thoughts. I'm like, whoa, how'd I, oh, where am I? <laughs> you gotta like reorient yourself. So in music, it's gonna be listening. So, I was telling you about, you know, when I saw Steve Smith at the side of the stage, like what I put my focus on was Ian, Ian D'Souza, the bass player in my band Modus Factor and, and what he was doing in that moment. I'm like, okay, I put my focus on the bass and that made me respond in the musical conversation to what I was doing in my drumming. So listen, I mean, take the focus off yourself and put it on what's around you, what's going on in the moment and how can you serve really drumming is about serving through being a leader so you're you're practicing leadership but you're really serving what are you serving rhythm music you know making people feel good in the audience serving the greater good music and drumming have been around before you and will be around after you so it's like this that's what's so cool about it you're serving something far greater than yourself. So the last one, gratitude. Gratitude, like appreciate that you get to do this. It's not like that you have to do it, it's that you get to do this. Like think of, you know, some different countries in the world, what's going on right now, maybe 500 years ago in the past, you know, maybe you're on the farm and you just gotta work all day 
or you, you know, there's maybe some war going on and you can't, you know, you might not have the luxury to drum. Uh, this is an amazing time we live in. The drum set's only a hundred years old anyway, so this is pretty cool that we even get to do this. I heard, uh, I think it was the golf uh, legend, oh, I'm totally, Jack Nicholas. I think it was him. And he said he had this really cool ability, even in the middle of like this, this high pressure championship, to like look around, you know, on this beautiful scenery of the golf course and go, you know what, this is pretty freaking cool. I get to do this, like, right on. <laughs> Just that tapping into that crowd to like, whoa, you know, yes, the pressure's on and maybe you're losing or winning or wherever you're at and you're in the middle of like, you know, uh, an incredible competition, but it's like, just look around and detach and go, this is pretty freaking cool, I get to do this. And in drumming, sometimes you get so wrapped up in like the pressure of the moment or the excitement of the moment or like, oh, I gotta play this perfectly or I gotta get, I can't forget this section. And then bam, it's over. And it's like, you didn't like look around and really appreciate it. So as I said at the beginning, this kind of all came from, uh, you know, learning the hard way on, on performing and, and being too wrapped up in what I'm doing, maybe trying to compete and maybe the whole thing whizzes by and I didn't even like, I took it too seriously and I didn't appreciate it. So RLG, be real. That's the first one. Second thing is listen, take the focus off yourself, put it on, on what's around you and gratitude. So as you walk towards that stage or as, as you walk towards that high pressure situation, could be like a business meeting or, you know, be nervous in an audition or something like that. RLG, be real, listen, gratitude. It's a really powerful acronym. I've used this for myself. I hope it works in your life. My name's Chris Lesso. Connect on chrislesso.com. We can connect wherever you are around the world. And I'm always putting out new ideas and sharing the LTR philosophy and concept. As you get better in your life, you take these skills and put it into your craft. And as you become a better drummer or whatever you're doing, you take it into your life and it creates a powerful cycle that will propel you forward and build some serious momentum. I will see you soon on the path. Drum and have fun. Thank you.